Hey guys, this is Casey Ferris. Thanks for checking out another one of my post-production tutorial videos. Today, we're gonna to be talking about best practices for using LUTs. LUTs have become much more popular in the last few years, and of course, if you know me, you know that I love LUTs and make LUTs and have everything to do with LUTs. So I wanna give you a couple tips for using them like a boss. And today we're gonna to be working in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2015 using the Lumetri controls, but this applies to any app that uses LUTs and does color correction and that type of thing. It's very similar concepts, it's just a little bit of a different way of doing it. So on to the tips. The first tip is a LUT is a tool and you have to use the right tool for the right job. And what I'm talking about is whatever type of footage that you have, it's gonna work best if you use a LUT that's designed for that footage. Here's what I mean. Here's some GoPro footage of a little RC car just tearing down the road. Looks awesome. But let's say that we wanna give this thing some style. So I'm gonna to go to Creative and go under Look. And here's where you can load a whole bunch of different types of presets and looks and LUTs from Adobe. But if you go up to Browse, you can pick whatever LUT you want. And let's go to the Osiris Rec 709 and let's do Vision 6. So that gives it some style. But the problem is this LUT was not designed for GoPro footage. So when you put it on the footage, if we look at our scopes here, the blacks and the whites aren't really set. It isn't really saturated the way that you would normally want. It's a very washed out looking image, which if that's what you're going for, that's great. But generally we're looking for probably a little bit more punchiness than this. So why is this happening? It's because this is shot with Protune. So if I take off this LUT, we have a very, very flat desaturated image. And so we don't have very bright whites, don't have very dark blacks. There's not much saturation going on. And so if we're just gonna put a LUT on this, we need a LUT that not only adds style, but also adds contrast and saturation to make this image look a little better. So if I go back to my look dropdown and hit browse, I can go over to the log versions of these LUTs and I'll hit vision six, log and hit open. And now this image looks a lot better because these generic log LUTs put in that saturation and that contrast that we're looking for. Now let's take this a step further and I'm gonna pick one of the ground control hang time two LUTs. And these are designed specifically for GoPro. So it's not just a general log profile, it's actually designed for Protune. And so anything that's shot in Protune, if it's exposed correctly, you can pretty much drop it on and it'll look pretty good. So you can see we get a lot more punch in the colors here, a little bit more contrast, a little more saturation, and that's because it's actually designed for Protune. So it's a good idea to use Protune LUTs on footage shot with Protune. And it's the same idea no matter what type of footage you're working with. Here we have some ProRes footage shot with BMD film. So I'm gonna go to look and browse. And I'm gonna try this LUT, this is called Heat. It's from the Blackmagic version of the new Rain LUTs. So these are designed for BMD film. And I put it on and it looks pretty good. Nothing's blown out, nothing's being overly crushed. Saturation's pretty good. And so it gives you a nice overall look without having to do much work. Now, if I were to use a Protune version of this LUT, hit open, then it's going to be really different. I'm gonna have really dark crushed shadows and it's not gonna look good because it isn't designed for that footage. So if you can, use the type of LUT that's designed for your footage. Now for the second tip, which is work under the LUT. If you wanna adjust the basic corrections of this shot, do it before the LUT is applied. And also when you're doing it, look at it through the LUT. If I want to adjust this, I'm gonna leave my look on in the creative tab and go up to basic correction. And then I can do some adjustments, maybe bring up my shadows a little bit, bring up my whole exposure, bring my highlights down maybe a little bit and I can kind of do my adjustments here before the LUT. And what that's doing is changing my original image just a little bit, and then when it hits the LUT, it gets amplified. But I wanna do all of my adjustments before it hits the LUT. Here we have a shot that's a little bit too dark, and I have an input LUT. So this is the very first thing that happens to this image is this LUT gets put on it. Now I can adjust my exposure, that type of thing, right? And that works okay. But if I go to my next shot, You'll notice I don't have a LUT applied here. I have it applied in the Creative tab. This is the same ground control BMD film to 709 LUT. And now when I boost my exposure and do all of my changes, this is happening before the LUT. Now here's the difference. If I make all of my adjustments the exact same, if I do 2.2, 4.0, and negative 10, 
you'll see I have the exact same settings in my sliders over here, but there's a big difference between working before the LUT and after the LUT. So the order in which you do your corrections makes a difference. Let's look at a more extreme example. So same shot, heavily stylized LUT on here. And let's just look at the way this image reacts. Right now, our highlights are at about 90 or so. And when I push up the exposure, it pushes up my highlights. It also pushes up my shadows. So I can blow this out or I can make it darker, whatever I wanna do. But let's look at what happens when we work under the LUT. So I'll go over here, I'm working under the LUT. And when I change my exposure, you see it's a lot harder to mess with my highlights. And that's because these adjustments are being fed through the LUT. Part of that LUT's look is having the brightest parts at about 90. And if you like the way that LUT works, you don't wanna mess with that. So it's a good thing to work under the LUT if you wanna keep those stylistic colors that your LUT is giving you. Of course, there are times where you would want to work after the LUT to get some specific looks. If I'm working before the LUT and I bring down my blacks, I can't make them all the way black. But after the LUT, I can take my blacks and bring them down and I can actually start to crush those out. So if I'm wanting to change how the LUT stylizes things, working after the LUT might be a good idea. But if I wanna keep that style, it's good to work before the LUT. Third tip is don't go crazy. Just like people can go insane with vignettes and just make some obnoxious thing that makes me wanna punch them in the face, you can do the same thing with LUTs. You can do the same thing with color correction in general, but it's especially easy to do with a LUT. How you ask? Well, let me show you. Here we have a shot of somebody doing a power slide thing in their Subaru. Now we wanna give it some style, so we go to creative. And we find a look, a oh, gold sport. Yeah, that's all, that looks awesome. Gold western, sweet. Gold tobacco, ooh. Let's do noir, yeah. Oh, no, intense. Yeah, I, I like intense, blue intense. Yes, this is awesome. And then you just call it good. If you do this, I'll be surprised if whoever watches your video doesn't hunt you down because it's, it's a crime. It's a downright serious crime. Unless this is like a dream sequence or maybe this guy's drifting in, um, in heaven, then this is a foolish and irresponsible way to do things. Don't just slap a look on something, okay? If I were just in love with this look and I just had to use it, I would do at least some adjustment here. I can bring down my highlights at least and, and get a little bit more detail back. Maybe bring down the exposure a little bit and just, you know, kind of start to make this palatable, you know, so people don't just, so you aren't just sitting there offending people with, with what you've done. You know what I mean? I mean, giving it that punchy look is great, but there's a difference between stylizing something and just losing your mind. So that's my advice for today. Let's review. Make sure to use a LUT that's designed for your footage because it's going to do the best job with the least amount of work. If you're gonna adjust your image, do it under the LUT to keep that style, unless you're trying to change the actual style of the LUT. And thirdly, don't go crazy because you make us all look bad. So I hope these tips have been helpful for you guys. If you like this video, make sure to hit like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel for all sorts of post-production color grading goodness, make sure to do that. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments section below. Once again, my name's Casey Ferris. I'll catch you next time.